Same-sex marriage. Big news this week in view of the decision yesterday by a U.S. District Court in San Francisco. Federal Judge Walker came down and said in a 136-page decision that Proposition 8, under California law, which makes and defines marriage as only between a man and a woman, was unconstitutional. Lots of stuff is being said about it, lots being published. But let's try and cut through the whole enchilada and see what this is all about. First of all, there are a lot of people who say, how can this happen? How can a federal judge suddenly take a proposition voted upon by 7 million people and brush it aside saying it's unconstitutional? Well, that goes to the very nature of the United States Republic. Remember, Declaration of Independence, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights among them, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. What does that mean? That means that there are certain rights that you have as an American citizen that I have that are in unalienable, that can't be taken away. It doesn't make any difference what somebody votes on. There are certain rights that are so important they can't be abolished by a vote of the people. Okay, so we are a democracy in which certain civil rights are almost sacred. And one of the rights that Judge Walker found was extremely important was the right to marriage. Now the decision is important in a couple of ways. He laid a very careful factual record here. He quoted extensively from a long trial that had taken place and said essentially that the government, state of California, does not show any rational basis, rational basis for having a law which essentially says that people who are of the same sex cannot marry. He said that in order for there to be such a law, the state, state of California, must show some secular interest in order to basically adopt a moral or religious law. It said in this instance, there was no evidence that demonstrated a secular interest. What are we talking about in secular interest? Well, the people who were in favor of a ban on same-sex marriages came forward and said, you know, if you're raising family, families are going to do much better if there is a man and a woman in the household. Kids aren't going to do well if you have a same-sex couple that's raising them. And they brought forward a number of studies that tried to demonstrate that. The judge, in considering those studies and considering the evidence on the other side, said that's not compelling evidence. That's not compelling evidence. And unless the state has some secular reason, some rational basis to enforce a religious or ethical law, well, then that law can't be enforced because we're not about enforcing religious law due to the separation of church and state. So that's basically it. That's what we're all about here certain inalienable rights that can't be taken away by the vote of the people. Where is this going to go? Well, this morning, the people who are in favor of the ban said they're going to appeal it, and they are appealing it to the Ninth Circuit. Ninth Circuit will hear the case, and where is it going to go from there? They said, well, they may take it to the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, the U.S. Supreme Court, decide, depending on what the Ninth Circuit does, may choose not to hear the case. They don't have to hear every case that comes to them. They may choose not to hear the case. So that's one place that this may go, and the decision made by the Ninth Circuit, whatever that decision may be, may stand. On the other side of the coin, the U.S. Supreme Court may hear this and may side with the district court and find that Proposition 8 in California is unconstitutional. Does that mean that same-sex marriages can take place throughout the country? It depends on how the decision would be written. Because the court could come down and say, well, this particular proposition is unconstitutional, but would not comment on what goes on in the other 49 states. Therefore, each state would have to work this out themselves. So, where is this eventually going to go? We don't fully know. But some time ago, and you can look back in our archives, you will see that I commented on this and said this will probably wind up in the U.S. Supreme Court, and it probably will. Do we know that for sure? No. Do we think that that is a strong probability? Yes. What will this U.S. Supreme Court do? We don't fully know at this point in time, but the way this decision was structured, many legal commentaries are looking at it and saying, hey, it looks like this is a pretty well-written decision because of how factually based it is, and a U.S. Supreme Court in reviewing it, depending on what the Ninth Circuit does, would be hard-pressed not to uphold it. What will be the impact upon you? 
Well, and the impact upon your neighbors? Well, it depends. It depends. Depends on where you live, your lifestyle, and what your interests are. But it may well open the way for same-sex marriages throughout California. All right, bringing you this case this week because this is what's in the news. We talk about what's in the news, but more importantly, we talk about the law and how it impacts you. I'm David Allen.